Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about logarithms. So, introduction to logarithms. So, if you've been watching these videos in order, um, then you should have watched the videos about exponential functions before you watch this video. And so, let's just recall what an exponential function is. An exponential function is a function of the form f of x equal b to the x. It's exponential because the variable is now in the exponent. Well, what we want to do is we want to find the inverse of this exponential function. So recall that an exponential function growth function either looks like that or an exponential decay function either looks like that. And so that depends on the base. If the base is bigger than one, it's a growth. If the base is between zero and one, then it's an exponential decay function. And so I drew these because I want you to see that regardless if it's growth or decay, that it is a one-to-one -one function. And one-to-one -one functions have inverses. And so we want to go through the process of finding the inverse. So how do we find the inverse? So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this so that it has a y in it. So recall that f of x is y, so I just replaced that. Um, the next step to find the inverse is to switch x and y. And then solve for y. And so when you try to solve for y, it becomes impossible to take y out of the exponent. So you might think, okay, we'll take the y root of both sides. <clears throat> Well, taking the y root would definitely cancel out the y power, but over here, you essentially still have y in the exponent because the y root is the same as x to the 1 over y. So it becomes an issue. You can't take the exponent out, the y out of the exponent. And so someone came along and developed, if I go back before I try to take the y root, we had x equal b to the y. Someone came along and developed a logarithmic function or a function equivalent to this and called it the logarithmic function. And so your logarithmic function is defined by y equal log base b of x. So this b is written lower and that's it's written down like a subscript, but it's the base and you're taking the log of this value right here, which is x. So this statement is equivalent to this statement. This is just another way of rewriting this so that y is solved for. So y is equal to log base b of x. And so you need to know that these two are equivalent. And some people like to think of it like this. So what it equals is always going to be your exponent. And then this base here will always be the base of your exponent. Um, some people like to think of, if you write it this way, log base b x equal y. I just switched the sides that the equal sign was written on. If you write it that way, some people like to do a little circular reasoning. b to the y equal x. So that type of circular reasoning. <clears throat> um, and so this is logs. And so what we want to know how to do is first we want to know how to go backwards and forwards between logarithmic and exponential notation. So for this first example, we want to write each of these equations in exponential form. So all these are written in logarithmic form, and I have up here the equivalent form. So this is the equivalent logarithmic form to the equivalent exponential form. So when we write this in exponential form, we first need to know what is the base. And so the base is what's written low here like a subscript, which is 2. Then we need to know what is the exponent. So the exponent is y, so that's what's on the other side of the equal sign opposite the log. So that's the 4. And then that equals this number right here. So this will be equivalent to 2 to the 4th equals 16. Again, if you think about that logical reasoning I was describing earlier, that's 2 to the 4th equals 16. So for this one, it would be 10. That's our base. This will be our exponent, negative 2. And that equals to 1 over 100. So this one here, our base is 7. This is our exponent 0, and that equals 1. So these are the equivalent exponential forms to those logarithmic forms. Now, for example 2, we want to go the opposite way. I have exponential equations, and we want to write each of these in logarithmic form. So again, I have my equivalent forms up here, my logarithmic form, and the exponential form is equivalent to. So whenever you write the in logarithmic form, you first want to know what is the base. The base here is 3, so that would look like log 3. Remember before the exponent was on the other side of the equal sign, so your exponent of 4 would actually go here, which means your 81 would go here. Alright, so for this one, your base is 10. 
your exponent will go on the other side of the equal sign. So that means your 1 million would actually go right here. And just follow that same pattern. Here your base is 1 fifth. Your negative 1, which your exponent, will go on the other side, which means your 5 will go here. So these are the equivalent logarithmic forms to these exponential equations. For example 3, we want to evaluate each of these logarithmic expressions. And so basically, remember on the other side of the log was the exponent. So log is equal to, log of all of this equals to y, and y is the exponent. So basically what we're looking for is the exponent. We're looking for what exponent do I need to raise 4 to in order to get 16. So you're looking for this, 4 to what power equals 16? And 4 to the second power is 16, so this will be equal to 2. This says 4 to the second equals 16. Alrighty, so for this one, 2 to what power equals 8? Well, 2 to the third power equals 8, so this is equal to 3. For this one, 1 half to what power equal 8? So, first of all, this is a fraction, and we know that if we want to get 8, we need to flip that fraction, we need to make it a two. And the way you flip a fraction is if you raise it to a negative exponent. So if I raise it to a negative exponent, it'll flip it and become two. And then we found out previously that two to the third is equal to eight. So this would actually be equal to negative three. The negative will flip this and make it a two and then two to the third is eight. So log base one half of eight is equal to negative three. And so this is how you evaluate logarithmic expressions. You're basically looking for the exponent that you need to raise the base to to get this number right here. There are two logarithms that are specifically defined. One is called the common logarithm and the other one is called the natural logarithm. So you need to know the names of these and what they are. So common logarithm is when you have a log written with no base. So that's your common logarithm. Well, if there is no base written, that is equivalent to a base of 10. So when we write no base, that means it's a base 10. That's our common logarithm. The natural logarithm is defined by ln of x. So the natural logarithm involves the natural number e. I don't know if you remember, we talked about that in the previous video. We talked about exponentials. Um, so natural log of x is the same as log base e of x. So e is Euler's number, and it's approximately 2.71828 and some more numbers. So it's an irrational number, which means it keeps going. And so this is your natural log of x, and this is your common log. Both of these are important because you have a button on your calculator for each of these. So you don't have, on most calculators, you can't change the base of log unless you have a TI-84+. plus. There may be a few others, but for the most case, you can only use the common log or the natural log. And so that's why we point these out because you can use these on your calculator. Okay, so for example four, we just wanna evaluate the following. So all of these are either your common or your natural log. So that means we have buttons for them on our calculator, depending on what kind of calculator you have, but mostly all of them should have log or natural log. So you just plug these in. So log of 100,000. So on this particular calculator, this is a TI-83 plus. My log button is here, and my natural log button is here. So I'll just put in log, and then I'll put in 100,000, and I get out five. So log of 100,000 is equal to five. And you just do the same thing for the next one. You will put in the log, which is here, and 0 0.001 hit enter and you get negative 3 so now the natural log button is here so here's my natural log and then e to the fourth so our natural log in a different color there's the e to the x button so I have to push second and then e to the x and then I'll put four in parentheses and then I have to close both sets of parentheses if you can see it and then I'll hit enter, and that's equal to 4. So natural log of e to the 4 is 4. So all of these, if it's a common log or a natural log, you can just plug it in your calculator and evaluate it. And so this is how you would evaluate these. Alrighty, I want you to try this one. So just pause the video for a moment. It shouldn't take you that long. So just pause it for a quick moment and see if you can evaluate log base 5 
125. Let's see what you get. Alrighty, so remember, whenever you're taking the log, you're basically trying to find the exponent. So what exponent do I need to raise 5 to in order to get 125? So you should have gotten 3. So 3 would be your answer. So this is a quick introduction to logarithmic functions. Um, so next we'll look at how to graph logarithmic functions. So if you're comfortable with this, go on and watch the next video on graphing. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you put them in the comments below. If this video helped you, make sure you hit the like button. And um, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.